If you've ever played lacrosse before, you know that the ball moves faster after the second bounce than after the first bounce. I'm here to clear up this phenomenon. Taking a look at this slow motion video, you see there is an initial x velocity in the positive direction and a y component of the velocity in the negative direction and an angular velocity rotating in the counterclockwise direction. In our case, we are going to idealize this system as an elastic collision since it is a good approximation for a lacrosse ball, even though in reality there exists a loss in translational kinetic energy. Analyzing this video from the impact position, we see from the right hand rule, angular momentum is out of the page. The torque is measured from the center of mass to, of the lacrosse ball to the point of contact, and the force is in the negative x direction since the ball at contact is trying to spin in the positive x direction. The torque then is into the page, which causes the ball to reverse its spin direction, thus the torque on the system must be much greater than the angular velocity. Then, when it bounces again, the angular momentum is pointing into the page while the torque on the ball is pointing out of the page because the force is pointing in the opposite direction. In this case, the torque is not great enough to change the direction of the angular velocity, but it does slow the spin rate down. In this next slow motion, I gave the ball a lot less initial x and y velocity, but simil similar angular momentum. At the first bounce, it resembles the previous example with a change in the direction of the angular velocity. However, the second bounce has linear velocity in the positive direction coinciding with the other video, but it has no angular velocity. This is due to the small rotations and the that the torque being opposite the direction, resulting in zero rotations after the collision. I wanted to simulate this motion in vPython, so I implemented the calculations by George Strobel in his Matrices and Superballs article in the American Journal of Physics. In his calculation, he made the assumption that the collision is elastic. He also used the, the moment of inertia of a solid sphere being two-fifths mr squared. Now, using the fundamental principle of the conservation of total angular momentum and the conservation of linear momentum, he reduced these equations to two equations with two unknowns. First, we have the final vx plus initial vx equals r times the final omega plus the initial omega, where omega is angular velocity. Second, we have final vx minus initial vx equals negative two-fifths r times the final omega minus initial omega. Thus, he found that the vx final equals three-sevenths the initial x velocity plus four-sevenths times r omega initial. And r omega final equals 10 sevenths the x initial minus 3 sevenths r omega initial. From these equations, you can see that the final velocity in the x direction is a combination of both linear and angular momentum components. This is the same for the angular velocity case. These two equations were vital for my program because it allowed me to update my vx, my vy, and angular velocities after contact with the floor to ensure that I have an accurate super ball representation. The only problem with this is there are a few differences between the lacrosse ball and the super ball. The super ball is known to be ultra elastic, while the experimental lacrosse ball is a less than ideal system. Thus, I am not able to represent my two experimental results on Python exactly, however, I established a very similar system that behaves like a lacrosse ball. As you can see, there exists a key difference between my Python simulation and the slow motion video of the lacrosse ball. In the Python simulation, there exists a small amount of backspin after the second bounce versus a small amount of topspin after the second bounce in the slow motion video. This is due to the frictional force. For a super ball, there exists a greater amount of frictional force than that of a lacrosse ball. This influences the overall torque on the system. 
and in turn it will change the direction or influence the amount of rotation after contact with the ground. Thanks so much for watching.